Good morning, dear students. My name is Farhan Mazhar, and today is 3rd of May 2021. The subject we are studying today is Physics 5054, it's all levels physics. Today we have set our hearts to solve May, June 2019. 505422 paper. This paper belongs from the zone two. And today in this session, in this video, we are going to solve the section A of this paper. Section B of this paper we will solve in another video. And you will be able to find out uh, find that video in my YouTube channel. Right now, I am only working on the section A of this paper. So let's start today's paper and okay. So here we go. So the first question coming up on your screen. So this is May, June 2019, 2-2 two, two paper, section A of this paper we will be doing. Okay, so here we have the first question. A student records the mass and volume of the two irregular objects, one made of iron and the other of copper. The student uses the equipment shown in the figure. So here you can see we have a electronic balance and we have also a measuring cylinder. And he says that the figure 1.1 shows the results obtained. When he put iron, uh, um, the mass of the iron is 400 gram and the volume of the iron is 51 yeah, cubic centimeter. And copper, when you use copper, the mass of the copper is 350 gram and the volume of the copper is 39 centimeter cube. The first question is determine how to determine the, describe how to determine the volume of an irregular object with the measuring cylinder. So the method is very simple. You pour some water in the measuring cylinder, note down the volume of the water. Let us call it V1. Then gently pour, uh, put the, um, for example, iron, piece of iron, in the measuring cylinder, the level of the water will rise. Now note down the volume of the water that we will call it V2. Then subtract V2 uh, from V2, subtract V1. That will give you the volume of that irregular object. So very simple. I have written this answer. Let me show you my answer. And then we will continue. <clears throat> so... Here we have, I have written this answer. So coming up on your screen, question number one, A part. Pour water in a measuring cylinder and note volume V1 of water. Put irregular object into water gently and note the volume V2 from measuring cylinder. Subtract V1 from V2. And difference of V2 and V1 will be equals to the volume of the irregular object. A very simple and a straightforward answer. Okay, so let's check the marking scheme. What the marking scheme says about this? Uh, uh, okay, so here we have reading volume with water, liquid alone, or use displacement can filled to spout. Subtract from reading of the volume with the object submerged in the cylinder or place rock in displacement can and measure the volume of the overflow with the measuring cylinder. Two mark question. I have not used the displacement can. I have used the simple measuring cylinder. So that is question number one, A part two, mark question. Hopefully you have understood. So let's move to the next part. Next part is calculate the density of the iron. The mass of the iron is given and the volume of the iron is also given. And the mass of the iron is 400 gram and the volume of the iron is 51 cubic centimeters. So very easily we can find out the volume of the of the of the iron and the density of the iron we can very easily find out mass is given volume is given the formula uh, for the <clears throat> for the density is mass divided by volume the formula is mass divided by volume so density is equal to mass divided by volume so that will be equal to 400 gram divided by 51 centimeter cube so the answer will be 7.84 grams per centimeter cube if I will round it off to two significant figures, the answer will be 7.8 grams per centimeter cube. So this is how you will find the density. It's a two marks numerical, very simple and a straightforward question. So that was the question number, um, you know, one B part. Let's check the marking scheme. What the marking scheme says, 
eight grams per centimeter cube will be the answer. So our answer is right. Okay, so let's move to the next part. The next part is C part. He says, a third object, which is also made of copper, so its density will be equal to the density of the copper, has the same volume as the iron, and this copper volume is equal to the uh, volume of the of the iron. Volume of the iron is 51 centimeter cube. So the volume of that piece of uh, copper will be also 51 centimeter cube. So we have to find out its mass, a simple question, but a little trick that the volume of that object is given, uh, the piece is of copper, but its volume is equal to the volume of the iron. So let me show you my work. First of all, from the given mass and the volume of the copper, I will find out the density of the copper. So density of the copper will be 350 divided by 39 equals to 8.97 grams per centimeter cube. Sorry, I have written here square, write it cube. This is centimeter cube. And density will be equals to mass divided by volume. Now, now I know the density of the copper, that's 8.97, four. And the volume of that piece of copper is equals to the volume of the iron. The volume of the iron was 51, so its volume is also 51. So M will be equals to 8.974 multiply 51. So your final answer will be 457.69 grams. And when you round it off to the two significant figures, that will be 460 grams. So the mass of that piece of copper will be 460 grams. <clears throat> Let's check the marking scheme. What the marking scheme has to say about this part. 460 grams. So good, our answer is right. So let's move to the next part, the next part coming up on your screen. He says, state and explain what happens to the density of the iron object when it is heated. When you will heat the iron, you see when you heat, the mass will not change, but the volume will increase. Density is mass divided by volume. So if the mass is still the same, but the volume has increased, the density will decrease. So the density of the iron piece will decrease. I have written this answer. Let's check what I have written. And then we will see what we can do. Okay. So when iron is heated, its volume will increase, but mass will not change. Density of the iron will decrease because the density is mass divided by volume. So it will decrease. So let's check the marking scheme. So marking scheme says density decreases and volume increases, object expands or molecular explanation of the expansion. So our answer is perfect. So we are done with the question number one. Let's move to the question number two. Okay, so here we go. Question number two is coming up on your screen. He says, let me reduce the size so you can see the whole question. Uh, figure 2.1 shows a container of gas connected to a manometer. The tube in the manometer, it has a constant cross-sectional area. The gas in the container exerts a pressure. Question number eight, define the term pressure. Before we go to the question, let's look, have a look at this diagram. Here we have a container. In this container, we have the gas. And this is a manometer. These are the two limbs of the manometer. Here we have mercury in the manometer. The difference of level between the levels in both the limbs of the mercury is 16 centimeter. It means that the pressure of the gas, uh, because the level on the side of the gas is higher. So it means that the pressure of the gas is 16 centimeter Hg less than the atmospheric pressure because the atmospheric pressure here is greater. That's why the level of the mercury on the air side uh, is lower and the level of the mercury on the gas side is higher. So which means that the pressure of the gas is lower and how much lower as compared to the atmosphere, 16 centimeter of Hg. So the first question on your screen is define the term pressure. Pressure is basically the force acting on unit area. Force divided by area is defined as the pressure. Let me show you the my written answer. And here we go.
फोर्स पर यूनिट एरिया इज कॉल्ड प्रेशर फोर्स पर यूनिट एरिया इज कॉल्ड प्रेशर P equals to F divided by A. This is the formula with which we work. Okay, so let's check the marking scheme. And the marking scheme has to say question number two A part force per unit area. That's the right answer. So we are good to go to the next question. He says uh, now. Okay, so here we have question number two, and it's B part. The density of the mercury is 1.4 x per 4 kg per meter cube. The gravitational field strength G is 10 newton per kg. The pressure of the atmosphere is 1 x per 5 pascal. Calculate the pressure of the gas in the container. So um, the pressure of the gas is 16 centimeter hg less than the atmospheric pressure. So I will convert first of all that 16 centimeter of HD into the Pascal, and then I will subtract it from the atmospheric pressure. So let me show you how I will do this. So this is how this is done. Okay, so the, the difference of the pressure between the gas and the atmosphere, that is uh, 16 centimeter HD. So I will convert this. The formula is the rho GH, so rho means density, 1.4 x per 4 into 10 into 16. I will convert that centimeter into meter and uh, 16 divided by 100. So your answer will be 2.24 x per 4. 2.24 x per 4 Pascal. That's the difference of the pressure between the atmosphere and the gas. So the pressure of the gas is the pr pressure of the atmosphere minus that difference. And 1.0 x per 5 minus 2.24 x per 4. And the final answer will be 7.8 x per 4 Pascal. 7.8 x per 4 Pascal will be the pressure of that gas in that uh, flask or in that container. So let's check the answer. Our answer is right or not. Okay, so the final answer, question number two, B part, 7.8 x per 4 Pascal. So our answer is right. Hopefully you have understood this numerical. So let's go to the next part. The next part is C part. He says, in the figure 2.1, the mercury level on the left-hand side of the manometer is lower than on the right-hand side. The... The gas inside the container is heated. This causes the mercury level on both sides to become the same. Determine the mercury level as shown on the ruler when this happens. You see the difference uh, of was of 16 centimeter. So when the gas pressure and the atmospheric pressure, they will become equal to each other. The levels, uh, the level of the mercury in both the limbs that will become equal to each other. So what will happen? From 16, the level on the on the right limb, it will come down eight centimeter, and the level on the left limb, it will from zero, it will go eight centimeter up. So the both the levels will become equal to each other at the reading of eight centimeter. I hope you have understood. Let me show you from the diagram so you can understand it more clearly. You see. Uh, here it is 16, here it is zero. The, this, the level of the mercury in the, the right limb, it will go down to eight, and this will move from zero to eight. So both the limbs will be, and the level of the mercury in both the limbs will become equal to each other, and that will happen at eight centimeter. So our answer is eight centimeter. We will check this answer later. So the next question is explain in terms of gas molecules, explain in terms of uh, gas molecules, what causes the level of mercury to become the same. So when you will heat the gas in the container, the gas molecules will absorb the thermal energy. Their kinetic energy will increase. They will start moving faster. So their kinetic energy will increase. Now their collision frequency with the walls of the container and with the mercury, that will increase. The collision frequency will increase. 
because the molecules have higher kinetic energy, now when they hit the walls, they exert more force because they are moving vigorously. So now they are exerting more force when they hit the wall. So that's why the pressure of the gas in the container will increase. So they will push the mercury and the mercury will go downward in the, in the right limb. So let me read my answers and then we will check them. So uh, question number two, C first part, uh, eight centimeter is the answer. I have already explained you how this is done. Okay, so the next part is molecules of gas will start moving faster when heated. Their kinetic energy will become higher. Their collision frequency with balls of container and mercury will increase. They will exert larger force on collision with ball. So the pressure of the gas will increase. So they will push the mercury in the right limb downward. So that is uh, the, my answer. Let's check what the marking scheme has to say. The marking scheme says that, uh, let's, okay. So two C first part, 5.7 to eight centimeters. So our answer is eight centimeters, so that's fine. So question number two C, second part, molecules move faster, have more kinetic energy. Molecules hit side walls, mercury, mercury, or you can say container. Molecules hit harder or more often, more frequently, more violently, more vigorously, or molecules create larger pressure or larger force or eventually molecules exert same pressure as here. So that will increase, increase, and, and then what will happen, their pressure became equals to the atmospheric pressure. So this is the question number two, C, second part. I hope you have understood three mark question. And I have also written the uh, answer. You can also write your own answer. Hopefully this marking scheme will guide you. So let's move to the next part. Then uh, we are done with the question number two. So we are moving to question number three. Here we go. Figure 3.1 shows three rays of light traveling in water from a light source S. One ray of light is totally internally reflected at the boundary between water and air. Okay. So this ray, it's emerged into the air. And this ray here, it is traveling at, on the boundary of the air and the water. And this third ray, it has been totally internally reflected. It has been totally internally reflected. So the question is on the figure three point, his question is on the figure 3.1, mark the critical angle and label it C. The critical angle is that angle of incidence in the dense medium, that angle of incidence in the dense medium for which the angle of refraction in the rare medium is of 90 degree. That is called the critical angle. That angle of incidence is called the critical angle. So we have to label this. I have labeled it. Let me show you on the diagram. So, oh, oh. So, hmm. so uh, this second ray, the second ray, this one, it has its angle of refraction in the rare medium is of 90 degree. So its angle of incidence in the dense medium is equals to the critical angle. So you can see with the red color, I have marked that angle and I hmm. have labeled it with the C. Hopefully you have understood. Okay, so let's move to the next question. The hmm. next. This is the marking scheme, middle ray angle of incidence labeled C. So we are done with this. Okay, so the next question is, he says state why only one of the three rays is totally internally reflected. Only one of the rays has been totally internally reflected. I can explain it to you. Let me show you my work. Okay, so this ray, the angle of incidence in the dense medium is less than the critical angle. So it will go into the air, it will emerge into the air. This second ray here, the angle of incidence in the dense medium is equal to the critical angle. So the light, when it will emerge, it will travel on the boundary of the air and the water. The angle of refraction will be of 90 degree. But this third ray here, the angle of incidence is more than the critical angle. 
the angle of incidence in the dense medium is more than the critical angle. So the process of total internal reflection has taken place. So out of these three rays, only one ray, the angle of incidence in the dense medium is more than critical angle. That's why only one ray has gone under the process of total internal reflection. So let me show you my, uh, let me increase the size. So let me show you my uh, written explanation that why only one of the rays went under total internal reflection. So uh, only one of the rays have angle of incidence in the dense medium greater than critical angle. That's why only one of them has gone under the total internal reflection process. So let me check the marking scheme and then we will see the other, uh, other part. Angle of incidence of right hand ray only greater than the critical angle. Only one of them have the angle of incidence greater than the critical angle. So that's just the right, that is the right answer. We have also written the same answer. He says, calculate the refractive index of the water. You know, N is equals to sine R divided by sine I. N is equals to sine R divided by sine I. So I can use this given data. Sine 34 divided by sine 25. Sine 34 divided by sine 25. And remember this uh, hint that uh, in that Snell's law, sine R by sine I, we always are put in the numerator, that angle which is in the rare medium. So if the angle of incidence will be in the rare medium, I will put that in the numerator. If the angle of refraction is in the, in the rare medium, then I will put the angle of incidence, uh, angle of refraction in the numerator of that Snell's law. So N is equal to sine R divided by sine I, sine 34 divided by sine 25, equals to 1.32. So final answer of the refractive index is 1.32. So let's check the marking scheme, what the marking scheme, marking scheme has to say. <clears throat> 1.3 is the final answer. So our answer is right. So let's move to the next part. It says the critical angle for the boundary between the water and the air. So we have to find out the critical angle very easy methodology. You know the formula for the refractive index, very famous formula. N is equal to one by sine C, where C is the critical angle. N is equal to one by sine C. I know the refractive index now, that's 1.3. So sine C is equal to one by N. So sine C is equal to 1.32. So C will be equal to sine inverse bracket one divided 1.32 bracket close. Just enter this thing in your calculator. So the answer will be 49.25. So the critical angle is 49.25. So I hope that you have understood that how I have done this, uh, how I came to know the critical angle. So let's check the marking scheme. What the marking scheme has to say, 49 to 50.3 will be the right answer. Our answer is 49.2 something. So our answer is right. Hopefully you have understood this numerical. So we are done with the question number three. Let's move to the question number four. A star emits electromagnetic radiation over a range of wavelengths. Figure 4.1 shows the brightness of the radiation from the star at different wavelengths. So here on the y-axis, the brightness is given on the x-axis, the wavelength is given. Radiation from the star is brightest at one wavelength. His question is determine the wavelength where the radiation is brightest. So we have to find out the wavelength where the radiation is brightest. I have done this. I let me show you my work and then. Okay. So here we have, uh, here that this was that graph so uh, when the the when so this y axis is showing the bright, brightness so the greatest brightness was here so i joined it so this is the greatest brightness under this i will check what is the wavelength so this is 1.10 raised to power minus 6 and this is 2.0 10 raised to power minus 6 so there are 10 parts so this value will be 1.2 
x4 minus 6 meter. 1.2 x4 minus 6 meter. So when the light is brightest, brightest, the wavelength is 1.2 x4 minus 6. Let's check the marking screen. Let's check the marking what the marking screen. It says question number four, 1.15 from 1.15 to 1.25 into 10 to the power minus six meter. Our answer is 1.2 x4 minus six meters. So our answer is perfect. Okay, so next question uh, coming up on your screen as the B part, he says, uh, okay. Visible light has a wavelength between four x4 minus seven meter and seven x4 minus seven meter. The radiation in the A part lies just outside the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum. State the name of the region of the spectrum that contains the radiation. So the visible light, its wavelength is four x4 minus seven meter from here to seven x4 minus seven meter. The radiation, which was in the set part A, its, red, its wavelength is 1.2 x4 minus 6 meter. So its wavelength is larger than the visible light, the wavelength of the visible light. So if you remember, if you remember that code word, which I have many times taught you uh, for the electromagnetic spectrum, the code word is Ronald McDonald is very ugly except Gary. Ronald McDonald is very ugly except Gary. Radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, X rays, gamma rays. So, in this order, the radiations or the light or electromagnetic uh, waves which have uh, wavelength larger than the visible light, they are infrared. So infrared is the answer. Infrared is the answer. So let's check the marking scheme. Infrared is the right answer, sir. Okay, so let's move to the next part. He says, uh, uh, this is question number uh, four and C part. He says, Determine the frequency of the radiation in the A part. The speed of the light is 3 x 8 meter per second. Because the speed, we know that's 3 x 8 meter per second. I know the wavelength, that is 1.2 x minus 6 meter. So very easily we can find the frequency. Uh, we will use the uh, wave equation, V equals to F lambda. F will be equals to V divided by lambda. So let's check my work. I have done this on a paper. Let me show you my solution. Okay, so uh, F is question. V is three X four eight meter per second. Lambda we know is 1.2 X four minus six meter. V equals to F lambda. F will be equals to V divided by lambda. 3x48 divided by 1.2x4 minus 6 equals to 2.5x14 hertz. 2.5x14 hertz. That will be the frequency of the radiation which was uh, shown in the A part. So let's check the marking scheme 2.5x14 hertz. And sir, so this is the right answer. Hopefully, you have understood a very simple and straightforward numerical on the use of the. Uh, wave equation, V equals to F lambda. So let's move to the next question. Uh, we are done with the question number four. Now we are moving to the question number five. Where we have Figure 5.1 shows part of a machine used to investigate electrostatic charging. So this is a Van de Graaff uh, generator. So this is the belt and this doom, this metal doom is becoming negative and negative and negative and negative. This negative charge is gradually increasing. Here we have a metal ball P and this is a conducting rod and it is earth. Here we have a ground wire or earth wire. Before the machine is switched on, the metal doom and the ball are uncharged. When the machine is switched on, 
the metal doom becomes negatively charged. Explain how charging the doom causes the metal ball P to become positively charged. You see, this metal doom is becoming negative and negative and negative. Due to the electrostatic induction, what will happen? This metal ball and So due to the electrostatic induction, you see this negative charge due to this is present. On this metal ball, the electrons from the left side, they will be repelled. So they will go to the right side. And from there to the, um, uh, this earth wire, they will go to the ground. So here a positive charge will appear. And this is how, this is the first part to mark question. He says, before the machine is switched on, the metal doom and the ball are uncharged. When the machine is switched on, the metal doom becomes negatively charged. Explain how charging the doom causes the metal ball P to become positively charged. I have explained it. Let me show you my written answer. So you will be able to understand it better. So, so on your screen, we have uh, this question. And it says, due to negative charge on the metal doom, three electrons in the metal ball, ball are repelled. So the left end of the ball becomes positively charged due to earth while electrons repelled goes to the ground. You see the metal ball will become positive. So let's check the marking scheme, what the marking scheme has to say. The marking scheme says, uh, hmm. Negative charge electrons experience repulsion force from the doom. Negative charge electrons are earth, move to the earth. So these are two marks question. So next question uh, coming up to your screen is, he says, uh, this question is about, uh, uh, use the size. So a photocopier box using electrostatic charging it contains a drum whose surface conducts charge where it is exposed to light. Figure 5.2 shows piece of paper, the drum and the heater of a photocopier. The photocopier produces a copy of an original page on a piece of paper. The sentences below describe the process of making the copy by the sentences, uh, but the sentences are in the wrong order. A. Uh, the drum is given a positive charge. B, the positively charged parts of the drum attract a black powder. C, where light hits the drum, the positively charged leaks away. D, an image of the original page is projected onto the drum. E, the drum rolls against a piece of paper, transferring the powder to the paper. F, the paper is heated which makes the black powder stick to it. Arrange the sentences in the correct order. The first and the last sentence are correctly, let me do the size now. Are, are already in the correct uh, boxes. So let me tell you, uh, it's very simple. First of all, a drum is given a positive charge. An image of the, then the D will come, an image of the original page is projected onto the drum. Then C part, after D, C part. When the light hits the drum, the positive charge leaks away. Then the B part, the positively charged parts of the drum attract a black powder. Then we will, we will have E part, the drum rolls against a piece of paper, transferring powder to the paper. And then we will have the F part, the paper is heated, which makes the black powder stick to it. So uh, let me show you the order in which this, these sentences are. They are correct. Let me show you that. So A will be, then D, then C, then B, then E, and then F. That's the right order. So A, D, C, D, E. DCBE, 
is our right answer. So let's check. So DCBE is the answer. DCBE. So our work is perfect. Okay, so we are going to the next question. So we are done with this question. That was the question number uh, five. Now we are going to the question number six. He says, two lamps, two lamps P and Q are connected to a battery of electromotive force EMF six volt and an ammeter as shown in the figure 6.1. Lamp P has a resistance of 15 ohm. The ammeter reading is 0 0.65 ampere. Calculate the current in the lamp P. We have to calculate the lamp current in the lamp P. You see, this is connected parallel to the battery. So the voltage drop here and the voltage drop on the Q also, they both, the voltage drop on the P will be equal to the EMF of the battery. So if I know the resistance of the P and if I know the voltage drop of the P, I can easily find out the current flowing through the, current flowing through the P. So V equals to IR. I equals to V by R. So let me show you my work. I've done this. And from there, you can also understand this, how I calculate it. But the conceptual thing, the most important thing about uh, this is because the P is parallel to the battery. So the voltage drop on the P will be equals to the voltage of the battery. So um, um, I know the resistance of the P. I know the voltage drop of the P. So I can find out the current. I is equal to V divided by R. So six divided by 15, and that will be 0 0.4 ampere. So the current flowing through the lamp P is equal to 0 0.4 ampere. Now in the, let me read the next question. First of all, first check marking. So 0 0.40 ampere. So that is the right answer. 0 0.4 ampere, so our answer is right. Question number six, A part, so let's move to the next part. The next part says, calculate the resistance of the lamp Q. We want us to find out the resistance of the lamp Q. It's a two marks numerical. So let me show you how I have done this, okay. So there we go. So in the lamp Q, uh, the voltage drop, it also, the voltage drop here will be equals to the six volts. Uh, I know the current which is coming out of the battery. The current coming out of the battery is 0 0.65 ampere. So current coming out of the battery is 0 0.65 ampere. So I can find out the total resistance of this circuit. The total resistance that is R equivalent, um, the current coming from the battery is equal to EMF divided by the equivalent resistance of the whole circuit. So 0 0.65 ampere coming out of the battery and the EMF of the battery is 6 divided by the R equivalent. So R equivalent will be 6 divided by 0 0.65 and R equivalent will be 9.23. So these two lamps, P and Q, which are connected in parallel to each other, their combined resistance is 9.23. And you know, because they are connected parallel to each other, their equivalent resistance is found by the formula. One by R equivalent is equal to one by RP plus one by RQ. So one by 9.23 equals to one by 15 plus one by RP, RQ. So one by RQ equals to one divided by 9.23 minus one divided by 15. So that will be, uh, the final answer will be 24.2 ohm. 24.2 ohm, so the resistance of the, of the Q will be 24.2 ohm, 24 ohm, you can say, in two significant degrees. It's a little, a little, little heavy question. I think you have understood this. So let's check the marking scheme. So let's check the marking scheme, what the marking scheme has to say. Marking scheme says 24 ohm will be the right answer. So we are good. We are good to go to the next part. And the next part is, the two lamps are now connected in series. Let's read the question carefully. He says, the two lamps are now connected in series to the ammeter and the same battery. In the space below, draw the circuit diagram. So the two lamps are now connected in series with each other. We have to draw the circuit diagram. It's a one mark question. And the second question is, explain why the ammeter reading is less than 0 0.65 ampere when the lamps are connected in series, you see when you connect them in series, their total resistance, their equivalent resistance, their combined resistance will become larger. 
So the battery is still same, the EMF is still same, but the equivalent resistance of the whole circuit has increased. So that's why, because I is equal to V divided by R, if the EMF value is still the same and the R value has increased, the current coming out of the battery, that will decrease. So that's why the ammeter will have a lower reading. Let me show you my work. So let me show you the work I have done. So here we go. So that's question number six, C first part. You have to draw the circuit diagram, same battery, ammeter, and uh, two lamps, P and Q, they are connected in series with each other. Then his question was, why the reading of the ammeter will decrease? The reason is when the lamps are connected in series, their equivalent resistance will be 39 ohm. That is that 39, you simply add them, 39 ohm, which, which is more than their equivalent resistance when they were in parallel to each other. And that resistance was 9.3, 9, sorry, 9.23 ohm. So the current from the battery will be less as EMF 6 volt is still the same. So the EMF is still the same, but the equivalent resistance has increased. So the current coming from the battery, that will decrease. So that was question number six, uh, C part. Let's have a look at the marking scheme uh, and then we will go to the next question. Current correct circuit with two lamps, ammeter and battery in series. We are good with that. And the C second part is the total resistance increases or each lamp has lower power dissipation process, potential drop, sorry, across it. So our answer is right. We have written the right description. So let's move to the question number seven. The question number seven is, he says, because sound point one shows the copper wire placed on two copper rods in the magnetic field between the poles of a magnet, the crocodile clips. Okay, so okay. the crocodile clip uh, A touches the terminal, positive terminal of the battery. This causes the copper wire to move. On the figure sound point one mark with an arrow, the direction of the current in the copper wire. So th these two are copper rods. These two white color things, they are copper rod. And this black color thing, that is the copper wire. So I have to show the direction of the copper wire with an arrow and the direction of the current in the copper wire with an arrow. Because I am thinking about conventional current, the conventional current flows from the positive terminal towards the negative terminal. So let me show you, here we go. So the direction of the conventional current I have shown here with this red arrow, that is conventional current. It goes from the positive terminal towards the negative terminal. So this red arrow is showing the direction of the current in the copper wire. Okay, so let's move to the next question. And the next question is, explain why the copper wire moves along the copper rod. It's a two mark question explain why the copper wire moves along the copper rod. You see, uh, let me show, explain, try to explain here from here. So this copper wire is a current carrying conductor. It is placed in a magnetic field. The magnetic field is from north to south. And here you have a, a current carrying conductor, copper wire, placed in the magnetic field. And, and, and by chance, this is perpendicular to the magnetic field. So it will experience a, a force on it. Naturally, this happens. If you place a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field, especially if you put it perpendicular to the magnetic field, the, it will experience a, a force. This is called motor effect. And I can tell the direction of that, that, uh, that motor effect with the help of the left hand rule. The left hand rule says, Take your left hand, stretch the three fingers of this left hand, this thumb, this index finger, this middle finger, mutually perpendicular to each other. Mutually perpendicular to each other. Let me increase the size so you can understand. So uh, the left hand, use your left hand, the three fingers, thumb, the index finger, and the middle finger. They should be mutually perpendicular to each other. If the Index finger is in the direction of the magnetic field. And you see, uh, it's like this. The index finger is in the direction of the magnetic field that's going downward. The, the 
the middle finger is in the direction of the thread that is going away from me then the thumb will be pointing in the direction of the of the pose of the pose you can see this okay so this is the magnetic field index finger this is the direction of the current away from me into the spring and my thumb is pointing towards the left my thumb is pointing towards the left so the copper wire the copper wire will move on the rods towards the left so this is how you need to write the answer and let me show you. i have written this answer let me show you i will show you my answer let me reduce the size and we will see what i can do okay so the uh, my return. copper wire is a current carrying conductor placed in magnetic field a force will act on conductor and due to this force conductor will move this is called motor effect direction of this force can be determined by using left hand rule stretch the thumb index finger and the middle finger mutually perpendicular to each other of the left hand line if the index finger is in the direction of the magnetic field and middle finger is along the direction of conventional current then the thumb of the left hand will be showing direction of the force which will be acting on the conductor so hopefully you have understood and let me read the next question and then we will check the marking scheme at the last is the next question coming up for two marks he says name two different devices that use this effect this motor effect is being used in the dc motor and this is also used in the loudspeaker so let me show you my answer i have written these answers there and you can see these answers the this effect is used in the dc motors and the loudspeakers so let's check the marking scheme what the marking scheme says about the question number 7 so question number 7 b part current and magnetic field create a force or current in wire creates a magnetic field left hand rule mentioned or used or interaction on the magnetic field of the uh, magnet and the current get a bullet So we have done. Uh, he is using two uh, ways of writing the answer. We have done one of them. So our answers are perfect. The question number C is electric motor or any device that contains a motor, and the, these loudspeaker or any device that contains a loudspeaker. So our answers are good. So let's move to the next part. Next part is coming up on your screen. It's uh, okay. So here we have a CRO. Question number eight. Figure eight point one shows the device that is used to show the force on an electron in an electric field. Explain how a continuous flow of electrons from the filament is produced in this apparatus. You see this filament. This filament it is hot, and by the thermonic emission, electrons come out of it. By the thermonic emission, electrons come out into the air here, and then we have an anode here. That anode is. positively charged it has a very high voltage and it attracts those negative charge it's positive and the electrons are negative so it attracts them so the electrons will accelerate it has a hole in it so the electrons will be accelerated and through this this hole the electrons will move further towards the screen a beam of electron accelerated electrons will be formed so this is how this is how you do this uh this is uh, how you will explain it and the question was explain how a continuous flow of electrons from the filament is produced in the apparatus let me show you my answer i have also written this answer so this is question number 8 a part coming up on your screen and here we go both by thermonic emission electrons come out of filament electrons are negatively charged and a node at high voltage is placed in front of electrons a node is positively charged so negative charge like negative electrons are attracted to a node a node has a hole so a beam of accelerated electrons will go towards the screen to that hole so this is how uh, electrons are accelerated and move so let's move to the next question and then at the end we will check the marking scheme when an electron is in an electric field there is a force on the electron the direction of this force is in the opposite direction to the electric field describe how the metal plates in the figure 8.1 can
can be used to show this. Let, let me explain you from the graph. For example, if you connect it with the negative terminal and you connect this lower plate with the positive terminal, so the electric field will be from the positive to the negative, it will be in the upward direction. When this electron will flow through between these plates, they uh, will be, uh, if, because the electric field is in the upward direction from positive to negative, the electrons will be deflected downward towards the positive plate. So the electrons, you can clearly see they are moving opposite to the direction of the electric field. So I have written this answer that you can have a look at question again. So what he's asking and what we are writing. So let's move to the my answer and I have written this answer. If upper terminal plate is negative and the lower is positive, the direction of the electric field will be upward. Electrons beam, when electron beam when passed through these plates will bend it downward. So the electrons have banded opposite to the direction of the electric field. So let's check the marking scheme, what the marking scheme has to say. And question number eight. Filament is heated hot, emits electron or thermonic emission at the, the filament cylinder anode attracts accelerate electrons. That was the eight A, and our answer is good, I think. And question number eight, B part, connect the battery potential different voltage power supply across the plates. Electrons deflect, attracts towards the positive, away from the negative, or field is from positive to negative. So electron is bent opposite to this. So this was the question number. Uh, so we are was done with this paper. So uh, my dear students, today we have, uh, so, so my dear students, today we have done May, June 2019 and 2-2 two, two paper. And this paper is a theory paper. And we have done the section A of this paper in this video. And section B of this paper, I will do in another video and I will upload in the YouTube and you will be able to find it in my YouTube channel. If this video is helpful to you and uh, this video is helping you to solve the past papers, kindly subscribe to my channel and also press the uh, bell icon. And uh, also you can press the like buttons and you can suggest these videos to your friends. So this. Um, so everybody gets help, especially paper practice. And you can, by sitting at your home, you can do the paper practice. Hopefully this, this is uh, helpful to you. So and don't forget to comment on my videos because they are uh, an energy booster for me. So thank you very much, everybody. And have a good day. God bless you all.